See, because the Word tells us all kinds of stuff. And my Bible says, I'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It don't say they might until right. they get to be 60 and then it don't work no more. And there's no caveats in that. So why don't we see it happen every time we pray? Well, somebody, somebody ain't right. Somebody's either in sin or unbelief, and unbelief is the worst sin of all of them. And so there we go again. Now I'm going to write a book about why this don't work anymore. Now I'm going to get me a scripture from here and one from there, and then I'm going to make up me a doctrine, and then we just all going to believe and go down the line. Yeah. Then we're going to let Mother Church be true and let God be a liar. Yeah. I don't want to do that today. I want to believe what the Word says. Amen. See, we just, we, we, like I told them in the, in the nursing home yesterday, we're just going to preach Jesus up. Amen. If it don't manifest in mind your life, it ain't on Him. <laughs> he did what he said he was going to do, and he continues to do what he said he was going to do. Somewhere inside of me or inside of that person, there's something not right. See, but we don't want to, we go to pray for people, we don't want to address the sin issue. Yeah. I'm just going to pray you on up off that sick bed, and then you just keep on living like an animal like you always been living. God ain't going to do that all the time. Right. Sometimes he will. Just to show them that he's real and to bring them to a place to realize, hey, this God is... This, this God that we just prayed to, he just raised me up and the doctor said I was going to die. He might really be real. I might better try to read this word and see what it says and start trying to do it. Because if he heals and raises up, then one day he's going to punish just like he said he was going to punish too. And so we're going to see a woman here. We'll start in 21 and we'll get the whole grip of the story. But the main one we're going to talk about is the woman with the issue of blood. 5 and 21. Mark 5, 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So the first before we get into this, we see these is how religious people do. They don't want to follow Jesus until it gets to where can't nobody else do nothing. And then they'll run down there and holler, Jesus, can you please come to my house? Because my daughter's going to die and I've already done everything that I can do. So let me run down here and get you who I really don't believe in, but I've heard you've been working miracles over here. So I'm just going to try you out. Me too. Me too. But we're going to keep going down. We said the, 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 the people just thronged around Jesus. They was all around and pressing in. And all uh, everywhere that he went preaching the gospel, people were always there. The Bible tells us that there was times that Jesus would go. The Bible tells us one time that he went into a house to hide himself, but he could not be hid. See, you can't hide Jesus. <laughs> if he's really in you, you can't hide it. Amen. Now, if he's not in you, you can fake like you got him for a while, but sooner or later, somebody's going to realize he ain't there. <laughs> That's right. So we want to be that one. But see, when you get Jesus inside of you, you're going to do the works that Jesus did. Yeah. That's what John said was going to happen in 1 John. If you be in him, you'll do the works that he did. Jesus said, if, if I go away and send the comfort of send the Spirit to you, you're going to do greater works than I did. Is that what your Bible says? Well, we won't believe what the Bible says. It says it's going to happen. And if it's not happening, we got to figure out why it's not happening. Yes. we got to go back to that place where we got all, we jumped the track and went on the wrong way and find out what happened and get turned back on the right way. So... They're coming through the crowd here, and these people are all pressing around him, and we see this thing all the time. Now, I want you to see that this throng was pressing all around him, but it ain't going to be but one that touches him. See, because it's a whole lot of people come to church and sit, they press all around where Jesus is, but they don't ever really touch him. And that's how it is in the church today. That's how it's always been in the church. It's not a new phenomenon that's going on now. We might have waxed a little colder than it used to be, but it's still always, always been. Because Jesus tells a parable of a sower. And first, first round, the seed falls on the ground, the word, and the devil comes and steals it, and it don't, it don't get in their heart. And then the next round comes along, they don't have no deepness in them. And when the heat gets on them, then they fall away. Then the next round comes along, and the thorns and thistles and the words and cares of this world come along. They choke the word and make it unfruitful. And we know from John 15, if you're unfruitful, you could all be cast into the fire. 
So it was only the last round, one and four, of the parable that became good ground. That's not a very good percentage of all the people that come and sit to hear the word. Now Billy Graham says 85, he says 85% of the people in church don't know the Lord. That's pitiful. That's pitiful. And today it's because in many places people don't preach the gospel message anymore. Amen. We just preach a watered down psychology to make you feel better about your flesh. But see, the message of the cross is going to make that flesh feel bad. It's going to see it's bloody and nasty and gory. That cross is not a beautiful picture to look upon. It's not a, a beautiful piece of wood, but it's the things that Jesus had to go through. And beyond that, it's even worse than those things in the flesh that he had to suffer. You've got to understand the sin that was behind it, uh, of the depravity of a man's heart. And think about murders and, and child molestation and, and, and covetousness and all the things that we have done. You might not have gone to that place. You might not have gone quite that far. But there's a whole lot of stuff in your heart that ain't good. And you know it ain't good. And see, so when somebody like me comes along and holds up this word right here, and you have to look into it and see the reflection of yourself in it, you don't like it. And so then you'll talk about me and how I'm hard. I'm hard all the time. He's always got a hard word. He don't ever bring nothing but a hard. That's not a hard word. That's what. That, that's the word. That's right. I don't come to step on nobody's toes because it's all, I, I get more out by all this before I ever get here. <laughs> I have to go through it before I bring it to you. That's right. Yeah. That's true. I don't like it most times no more than you do. But I, I, it, it makes me feel good to know that the Lord loves me so much that He's going to chastise me. And it makes me feel good to know that it touches my heart and it stirs on me and it moves on me and it makes me want to give it up and do something different. See, because if it don't move on you and make you do something different, there's something wrong. Amen. You're dead inside. Right. You don't have the spirit of truth dwelling inside of you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because if this word don't prick you and don't move on you and don't quicken something inside of you, it's something you, you're just dead. Let's just go ahead and say it how it is. Come on. <laughs> See, I don't want to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. And it may not be pretty all the time. This woman that we're going to look at right here, her situation wasn't all that. It just wasn't that good. But this is how life is. This is how life really is. Not like something you see on TV. This is how it really is. And that's what I need to know. I don't need to know some story somebody wrote made up over there. I need to know how I'm going to get through where I'm at. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Now, I see this woman had an issue of blood. And if you go back and study in Leviticus, the 15th chapter, it talks about having issues of blood beyond, beyond a, a, a normal a, a menstrual, all that kind of stuff. And before that, it talks about men. And we don't have to go into all that because we're trying to talk about something spiritual and not something that's in the natural. 